It's Inside the NBA, and it's presented by Hyundai, coming your way live from Studio J in Atlanta. Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley. A four-game Sunday, three of them here on TNT. Hey, these two days have been fabulous for the NBA. 107-103, Oklahoma City wins tonight. Let's hear from Scott Brooks. Denver's a physical team. They play, they play hard, and they play good basketball. Questions? Hey, Scott, can you talk a little bit more about Kevin and Russell, just their production? Uh, Kevin had obviously a rough go in the series a year ago, but just talk about those two guys a little more. Well, Kevin was um, was good. You know, you, you can't – defensively, I, I like the fact that he was challenging himself to get stops. I really believe – I don't think a guy can score on him when it, if he really locks in and, and uses his length. But offensively, he, he, had, he had a good game going. And Russell did a good job of finding them. We didn't turn the ball over many times in the second half, which was critical because this team, they score points. And they score points off turnovers. They score, score points off bad shots or quick shots. But we did really did get a good job of controlling it. Russell was good. Again, I think uh, both of them played well. And, and give them credit. They, they stepped up and made big plays when we needed it. It looks like Scott. They had Durant and Westbrook scoring two-thirds of the Oklahoma City points in this game. 72 of them combined out of their 107. I mean, our guys Lawson upstairs, the back. a very Lawson tough job oh, trying to whittle down, down the highlights in this game because there were a the slew of them. The well, it's easy to Oklahoma City because you just got to show two players. <laughs> there were. Remember, On the other side, the Denver the shared the wealth, I'll tell you that. This was a very good basketball game, a really good game. And that was a charge. I want the charge that they did not call. Well, I think overall, what, what they have, Maynard came in and did a good job, and you know, but Westbrook hit the three. I, I, I agree with you, Chuck. We're talking in the back. I don't know if every, I don't, I can't remember. We said it on the air in the back, but somebody else has to score. Yes, I said that at halftime. They can't, like, man, they won the game tonight, but they could not go go far. But two guys, with two guys scoring 70 points, and nobody else really helping them out at all. Serge Ibaka with that spectacular block a moment ago. Then you saw Raymond Felton going in the lane and then swipes the inbounds. And it's 56-48, Denver. Well, I think the country got a, got, got a good opportunity to see how well Denver plays and how they can do it. But this is George Mann, Iceman, Gervin. <laughs> From Kevin Durant, who would finish with 41. Mm. Before the half, Westbrook steal and throws it down. OKC down 60-59 to 59 at the half. Tell you what, Ernie, it's some really Denver. You know, that people talk about they don't have, this was a lucky play right here. You thought he was really hurt on this play. Yeah, Nene had a great first half, too, and then he leaves with the knee injury, but would return. Gallinari to Wilson Chandler somehow, game tied at 70. Hey, what, man, they got a bunch of players, but they don't have this guy. Durant had 14 in the third quarter. Makes it look so easy to hit. Yeah, you step out, you get the three. You put you off the dribble, put you on skates, gets to the rim, can reverse it, put it down. Oh, and I really believe that you get him off the dribble, we can step back, get off me. You don't make it look easy. It is easy when you're that good. Nene in the lane. Cuts the lead to one. Russell Westbrook. Knocking down a jumper. 98 to 90, but it was far from over because Denver throws a little 9 nothing run at him. Oh, and one. Why don't you kiss him next time? <laughs> don't foul him. Foul him. Don't let no three-point plays in the playoffs. Ooh, get some of that. Nene over Durant. And he looks like it's fine. Hey, what a great play. What a great pass by Kane and Martin. So it's 99-98 Nuggets. This was, Aaron, this yeah. was a bad call. That's yeah. offensive goaltending. Yeah. Basket interference, call it what you will, but no. Perkins was up there, got his hand right in there. Yeah, that's not even close. No, that's not even close. You got to call that, Ralph. But the bucket is allowed. Well, this one, time. no question. Although, he gets the roll, does Westbrook. Aaron, I didn't like this play at the timeout while Denver went for the three. But when you make miss this three, the game is over. It's just over. You got a lot of time. Yeah, that's a bad play. Make guys make free throws yeah. at the, on the other end. They had 22 seconds ago. You got to, first of all, that wasn't even a good three. But you really didn't need a three in that situation. And Westbrook came down and missed a free throw after that yeah. when you could have done the same thing. If they're going to guard the three, take guys always make the game longer. They're playing for the three. Take the ball to the basket.
Oklahoma City survives 107 to 103 over Denver, and that's just game one of this best of seven. High energy, up tempo, up and down the floor as Denver shoots 51% and Oklahoma City 49%. Time for the Subway fresh take on this one. So, I mean, you expend that kind of energy in game one. Is this, can you do that for an entire seven game series, these two teams? Are you talking about Oklahoma City? Both, Both teams. teams. Oh, yeah. Denver can. I mean, you heard, you heard George Carl just begging his guys, don't rest. Uh, in transition, rest on free throws, rest on makes. He was, you know. Well, Denver's a much deeper team. They, they, they're going to get a big contribution from a bunch of different guys. The pressure is on Westbrook and Durant. Can they play like that seven games in a row? And I don't think they can. They're not going to score 40 and 30. It really, you know, somebody please step up on those guys and give them some help because this is going to be a long series playing like that. You know, because as well as Nene played and as well as Wilson Chandler and, and Gallinari played, Game two, it might be Al Harrington and J.R. Smith for Denver, two guys who can be explosive off the bench. So they have the, if, you, the, if it's this type of series, I would say that it's an advantage for Denver if they're hard fought and you have to make shots. Because there's one thing in basketball that's not consistent, is that you're shooting. Everything else you can have consistent, your effort, your defenses, your, your, uh, your execution, your decision making. But your shot sometimes leaves you. But Denver has more weapons to make that happen, so they would have the advantage yeah. if the series continued and, like this. And you see one of the weaknesses of Oklahoma City is, if you look at all those highlights, that was a really good defense. Those guys just made shots. And like Kenny said, jump shots, it, they come and go. And if, if, if I'm Denver, I'm saying, hey, you know what? Kevin Durant made two or three step-back threes. You just play good defense, and as the series progresses, they've got to find a way to get some easier baskets. I said before the game, James Harden, to me, is that guy. Eric Maynard gave him 12 tonight. That's not enough. But James Harden is the guy, to me, who's the, their third best player. He, somebody's got to step up and get them two guys And I help. think they missed uh, Aaron Aflalo, uh, Denver. Yep. Because what he would have done, he would have moved to the point guard position on defense. So he would have been a bigger guy on Westbrook down the stretch. Maybe made some tougher shots for Westbrook. You know, you had smaller guards with Lawson and Felton on him. Guys he could shoot over. He feels he's comfortable in that mid-range game. But, you know, a 6-5, a follow, I think, would have made the difference. And also, they miss Moskov, too. Yep, in the, hey, in the Denver, they, hey, they come in like bananas. They come in bunch. <laughs> Durant, 41. West I thought you were going to say crazy. 31. Oh, yeah. oh, they, bananas. they got the one crazy guy. And now the teams <laughs> take a deep breath and play again on Wednesday at OKC. When we come back, the postseason return of the New York Knicks. The highlights from Boston are next. Inside the NBA, brought to you by the 2011 Hyundai Elantra. A compact car doesn't have to be a compromise. And welcome back. They are two of the NBA's storied franchises, the Celtics and the Knicks, meeting for the 14th time in the postseason, but for just the first time in 21 years. Back in 1990, in a first-round best of five, the Knicks lost the first two, then rallied to win the next three and KO the Seas. This time around, the Celtics begin their quest for a third trip to the finals in the last four years, while the Knicks are back in the postseason picture for the first time since 2004. Carmelo Anthony, since the Knicks acquired him to go with Amari Stoudemire, 14 and 14. Rajon Rondo, Ooh, what a man. Yeah. Boston up one after one. You know what, Ernie, I, I agree with you in terms of Boston being a story franchise, but right now the Knicks have to become one again because I have a 14-year-old son who don't know the Knicks have ever been good. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm dead serious, so that's not. Wait, you said the Celtics a story franchise? Yes, they are. Of course they are. Right. I said the Knicks. He said I said the Knicks have to prove again that they are because I know 14-year-old kids that don't know it like that. Well, As I'm going to go to the basket. Uh, meantime, back at the highlights. <laughs> Patrick Ewing is rolling over in his grave right now watching. <laughs> <No. laughs> hey, Jermaine O'Neal was huge. He was fantastic tonight. Not only that block, then he's back, back down, down the other end. Oh, Rondo, let me find you, stick fella. Oh, one dribble up, pull up. That might have been a dunk, though. You know what? He, went, he got hurt. He went back to Chicago and worked with Tim Grover, one of the best trainers in the world, if not the best. Little scoop by Ray Allen the there. Player. You know what? 23-9 to 9 
run, bridging the third and fourth quarters for the Celtics to erase that New York lead. Mm. Pierce off the glass, and yeah. then Jeff Green. Jeff Green gave him a little spark tonight. Yeah, this will give him the lead at 66 to 64. Game tied at 75. What do they call Chauncey Billups? Oh, oh Mr. Mr. Big, Big Shot. shot. <laughs> Three-point game in favor of the Knicks. Amari Stoudemire. Ooh, ooh, Ernie, Ernie. Yeah. And for one thing, can stop this. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. How about this? Oh, this is even better. Mm. But you know, Ernie, the, the Knicks made me mad, but they never went to him again. He never took another shot in this game after that. 82 to 78, under four minutes to play. Here's yeah. that man again, Jermaine O'Neal. He stepped back into in his hot tub time machine. <laughs> game tied at 82. Now, Phillips. Hurts the this knee. This was not a good shot right here. This was not a good shot uh, by Carmelo right here. But Phillips has to leave after injuring the knee. Game and then, tied at 82. And to me, Ernie, this was big because the Knicks, you know, they got a good step back three by Tony Douglas over Ray Allen. But I thought overall, down the stretch, they unraveled. Didn't take great shot, didn't have ball, and, and Ernie, good ball or Ernie, clock management. And that right there is inexcusable. You should never score on an out-of-bounds play, kid. You know why? That's the only time you have five guys guarding four. And it took Teacher, a, that's basketball terminology. Took all of a half a second off the clock, and then... Ernie, this was a good call, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, they're leading by one, and Mello was whistled for the offensive foul. So now Boston's got another crack at it, down one. And down one, they, who do you go to, Ernie? Guy who can really get it done, hit big shots. And, and Kevin Garnett was very fortunate on his play because, to me, after the pick, the picker, here, you pick, Ray Allen says the pick. I thought Kevin Garnett might have had an offensive foul on, on Douglas, well, but Ray Allen knocked good. it down. I mean, let me tell you what Kevin Harlan would say. Right between the eyes! <laughs> it certainly was, and it's a lead for the Celtics. Knicks with no timeouts. Oh, get to the rim, Carmelo. Oh, get to the rim. On, you got on, a lot of time. Oh, they double it. Throw it to Douglas. No, he shoots oh, the long. Oh, that's not a good shot. And with that, the Boston Celtics take game one over the Devontae New York Knicks. West played very well tonight, too. Nice contribution. Ray Allen had 24. His mom, Flo, is going to run the Boston Marathon again, again. You know what? I, tomorrow. I, I talked to Miss Flo. I was going to run with her tomorrow, but I got to work. You know? <laughs> run how much of that 26? Uh, 87, <laughs> 85. He's the working Celtics. on a 10-minute workout. He's about <laughs> to do six minutes. Minutes. Yeah, don't He's overextend to... yourself you know, tomorrow. You know what? You got the 10-minute workout it's, tomorrow? It's CrossFit, man. It it's it's it starts at 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, what kind of workout is a 10-minute workout? It's called CrossFit. I'll let you know tomorrow how hard okay. it is. Okay. Hey, Rob, audio runs five miles a day. Does that get you in, uh, in, in shape, 10-minute workout? Meantime, meantime, back at the Knicks Celtics series, let's uh, let's hear from Ray Allen with DA. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ray, take us through that final play. Paul got the inbounds, but you got the shot. We couldn't get the ball in. You know, uh, Jeffrey was so big, uh, so long, covering uh, Rondo. Uh, we still ran the same play and uh, trying to screen Melo and get him to cause a mismatch and I was open on the perimeter and you know the shot went in for me. Whenever you start on the road you want to steal one on the road and um, we kept them from doing that and you know we got the tech home court so we look to do that on Tuesday. You know Ray's the hero with the shot. Uh, to me Paul's the hero with the pass. You know that's a great example of not playing hero basketball. Mr. Johnson, everybody wants to know what happened on that play where you went out. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. It really wasn't any contact. I just, as I took off, off my left leg, it just kind of buckled and gave out. And, um, you know, it was just kind of painful to kind of even, not even run on it, just walk on it. It was kind of painful. So I knew I couldn't finish the game out. So um, I don't know, man. We're just going to make sure it's not too bad and um, just try to get as much treatment as I can and, and try to get back as soon as I can. It's a strain, we were told. So what, what does that entail in terms of damage and in terms of how long you're going to be out? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, we'll, I'll probably know more tomorrow. Um, we'll get some more, look at it some more tomorrow and get some tests on it if we have to. But uh, hopefully it's not too bad. By the way, DA, a footnote to that story says that when Phillips was leaving the podium area, Pierce asked him if he was all right, and Ray Allen asked him if he was going to play Tuesday, and Phillips said, I will be out there. Uh, meantime, Ray Allen with the 24 points tonight, including that game-winning three-pointer. And uh, Ray Allen being Ray Allen, 87-85, Boston over New York.
Boy, you can point to a lot of guys on that Celtic team and say, boy, without the contribution here, without the pass by Pierce, without the mm -hmm. shot by Allen. Yeah. Jermaine O'Neal yeah, was but huge listen, that, that was two too. guys. I mean, those guys, first of all, they're supposed to do that. They're going to the Hall of Fame. But Jermaine O'Neal was fantastic. And uh, Delonte West gave him a great lift. You know, I was doing a little research on Jermaine O'Neal, and when he went out, he went to Chicago to work out with Tim Gr Grover, who's the best trainer, I said. And he lost uh, some weight. Did so he don't have as much pressure on his leg. And Doc, Doc said, uh, I was watching the game earlier today, said he's been spectacular the last week. So kudos to Jermaine for going to get Chicago, getting his legs together, and kudos to Tim Grover. Well, I, I think the one thing that when you watch the Boston Celtics play is, you know, Doc Rivers said it, you, Ernie, he said no hero basketball, and it's really called execution because the guy who's supposed to get the basketball, regardless of who it is, gets it. So it, basketball is really simple, but... It doesn't always go that way. If you're open, you take the shot. One man on you, you beat him off the dribble. If two guys are on you, you pass the ball. But the thing is, everyone doesn't want to fall under those guidelines. And when you don't fall under those guidelines, down the stretch, that's when it shows. The last 30 seconds of the game, when the game's on the line, you can get away with it in the third quarter, you can get away with it in the first quarter, but you cannot get away with it, and Boston lets you know that, and they make the right plays down the stretch. Celtics win it by a deuce, 87-85. Game two is Tuesday in Boston. When we come back, well, there you go. Is that, is that part you of your, is that your, your cross pit? A cross pit. Y'all are hating on cross pit. I'll see you at 12.15 tomorrow. They got a five-minute coffee break, too, so <laughs> it's only a five-minute workout, actually. Nice work, guys. Off those bikes. Burger time. Yeah. Uh, when we come back, the Sunday action in the West, the two-time defending champions opening up against the Hornets. Uh oh! Huh? Uh oh! Yeah, wow. The top seed in the West. San Antonio faces a Memphis team looking for its first ever playoff victory. Uh-oh. Ow! Oh. Oh. Back here on Inside the NBA, presented by Hyundai. Check out SI.com and behind that the mic. fun to win a beauty contest with them guys. But everybody else just ugly. There's always fresh material. I know. I just won any of the rest. Me and C. Webb just won by default. Okay. <laughs> Why you throw at C. Webb? You got a man close well, to No, I'm telling you. C. Webb's a good looking guy. <laughs> I'm I'm just, oh, you, you got you a nice You're right, Kenny. <laughs> I got no problem. <laughs> well, I didn't go crazy <laughs> like you did over T.O. <laughs> very good insight, Jet. <laughs> a man crush. Chris Ball and the Hornets. <laughs> At Staples Center, oh, look, look at that oh, bullet to Aaron Gray. That reminds me of Cam Newton last year in that championship game. Here's a crazy sequence at the end of the half. Mm. Kobe, Kobe Bryant going to go down and hit his head, so he stays down while the action continues. And so while Kobe was still down, Chris Paul lines up a three, knocks it down, and there's still time left because Ron Artest throws that thing in. Meantime. Kobe's still down. Eventually, he would get up after him. You see what happened here? He kind of hit his head on a chair over here. Oh, it was that fan. And well, he's, he said he that felt something that was deep. like steel over there. So oh, that was that guy's suit. Need to get. All right, he's man. The guy, they took his tickets away. He took them away. By the way, he uh, he would come back. In fact, he would score 34 points in the game on 13 of 26 shooting. This was a great shot right here. Mm -hmm. Step through. That was a Michael Jordan step through. I told you, quick comparing Kobe Bryant to Michael Jordan. I said Jordan. it was a comparison play. I didn't say he was not And why you can't? I think you can compare him. No, you, first of all, you better stop that. Okay. Championship. I told you, Kobe Bryant was the sixth greatest basketball player ever. Well, then, Michael Michael's Jordan, number one. Uh, yeah, that's comparable. Uh, nobody go around saying I'm number six. Uh, Five-point game up to seven. three by Shannon Brown. <laughs> how, about, how about the day? Oh, yeah, 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 oh listen. Well, you can't put power. Wait, you cannot put power Gasol on the island and say guard this dude. Guard to come on now. That's just bad defense. I don't, and you know they did the same thing. And then this is just a mismatch too now. Yeah, because okay. you warmed up now. Warm oh yeah, hold on. I told you. Warm it up, Chris. Why don't you throw it up? Put <laughs> the house on fire, and you can't put it out. So while New Orleans was leading by ten, Aaron Gray, who had a nice game off the bench. I hope he's all right. Yeah. Hurts the ankle. He had 12 points, which was a season high for him. You know what? He played great. And now great without game. David West, I mean they they're getting banged up. Chris Paul. Oh, he's still 
Don't cry. It's just a teardrop. 33 points, seven rebounds, 14 assists. Chris Paul only had one 30-point game all season. That was 33 against the Kings. He matches that today, 33 wow. against the Lakers in game one of the Western Conference first rounder. So number, number two in the West loses. And number one in the West also lost. Those highlights still to come. But right now, we get the post-game report from Cheryl Miller with CP3. Thanks a lot, Ernie. Well, Chris, for a team that was manhandled during the regular season with the Lakers, what was different this afternoon? Our energy. Our energy. We really picked it up. Uh, we knew that the playoffs was a new season for us, and all we wanted was opportunity. But it's, it's only one game, not that big of a deal. But um, Aaron Gray was outstanding for us, our bench, and uh, that's all we won the game. You know, talk about Aaron Gray and Carl Landry. You guys were coming into the game undersized in the post, but you guys in the paint were fantastic. Yeah, you know, one thing you can't measure with size is your heart. You know, and those guys really came out tonight and they brought it. And uh, like I said, it's one game. We got, we're going to have to come out Wednesday and play with that same momentum. Must be like 10 years, maybe since the Sixers in the finals. Am I right? I'm, I'm just conjuring up, trying to figure the last time you guys lost opening at home in a playoff series. Yeah, it's the Rockets. Was it all nine? Yeah, it's not, I'm not stunned by it. I'm not shocked by it. I'm, I'm, I'm more shocked than you. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you win. You know, and you stay even kill, you you were emotional enough. Tonight we lost. We didn't never we never controlled the momentum. We didn't get guys involved that need to be involved in the game. And you know, if you're a little cocky, you lose. Did you guys come into this series with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder? Always. I think you always have to play like that. I've been that way since a kid, playing ball with my older brother. But uh everyone on our team understands uh, what's taking place here, and we're just going to continue to take it one game at a time. All right, thanks for your time. No problem, Cheryl. All right, EJ, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, CP3. And uh, New Orleans thanks CP3 as well. 17 points coming in the fourth quarter, 33 on the day. Fantastic game. He was, um, he won, he willed that team, and I've got to give a shout out to Money Williams because he had that team ready to play. And they were never intimidated at all. I would agree with the non-intimidation factor, but I, I'd still say that the Lakers played right into their hand. The Lakers, 85% of the time, I said earlier, they could, they could switch pick and rolls and guard. Pal Gasol, Bynum, they could move their feet. Hey, Kenny. They can't move Hey, Ernie wants you to shut the hell up. He want to get to these highlights. Well, yeah, this, this is how the day started. Manu Ginobili, a, a bystander, watching Tim Duncan, who really looked frisky early on in this game. Tell you what, this was a very good basketball game. Uh, oh, he, uh, he, uh, Tim Duncan had a, a, a hot tub time machine flashback day two for the half. Charles, Ernie told you to shut the hell up. <laughs> That's OJ Mayo, and there are the fans at FedEx Forum in Memphis watching it. Uh, that was nice of the Grizzlies to do that. Yeah, those those 50 fans really didn't. No, but it was 27 to 22 after one. Grizzlies, be nice, Jet. It was uh, nice, though. That was nice. That was Mike, really nice. Mike Conley hits a three. Played well today. You know, you know, he's a guy that probably a lot of people around the country are like, who is he? But these Memphis Grizzlies are talented in a lot of different areas. And what do they have more than the San Antonio Spurs? They bigger. They much bigger. Yes, they are. Duncan, 12 points in the first half, 6 out of 10. Memphis, though, up by 2 at the break. OK. Well, match up with all those big bodies they got. Tony Parker, mm, good pass. Oh, right San Antonio up one, and then Parker, Parker mm, finds his way to the rim. Sometimes when you're big, it's a disadvantage, right, Tony? <laughs> Gary Neal. They're up by 10, 67-57. It's over, Ernie, it's over. Let's go Oh, home. no, Jet, au contraire. Okay. Oh, look at this big boy right here. Marcus Saul had himself a big day. 24-9, and 9, 9 out of 10 from the floor. Ernie, I just told you, this team here, man, that they're bigger. I, I'm a little biased because I watch them play a lot because of my coach coach there. But they are a lot better than people realize. Memphis was down four after three. And then Matt Bonner helps to erase the Grizzly lead with a couple of threes. That's his specialty right there. So they're up 96-94. You think it's over, Ernie? It's over. Oh, au contraire, Jeff. Oh, okay. Look at that. Gasol again. Ernie, you know 98 96 was the San Antonio uh, lead. And then, what a shame Battier go to school. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> 99. I think it's cool. 98. Close down, isn't it? Now it's a two 
Now it's a three-point game and San Antonio's last gasp. Richard Jefferson wide open low. And the Memphis Grizzlies have won a playoff game for the first time in franchise history. They were 0-12. And, <laughs> and there they are. They are loving it at FedEx Oh, Ford. it's a love fest. <laughs> it's a love fest in Memphis. You know Shout what? out to Memphis. I spent 10 days down there this summer. One of the tell you what, they played well today. They weathered that storm when they got down 10. Take my hat off to Lana Hollins, my coach. Hey, you know, the, the Spurs had been 51-3 and three, taking a lead to the fourth quarter. They let one get away today in game one of the Western Conference first rounder, 101-98. Uh, Mark Fine with our post-game report. As the Memphis Grizzlies walked off the court following the first playoff victory in franchise history, they were still getting instructions from their coaches. Coaches telling them, act like you've been here before. So yes, there was celebration, but it was obvious they still have bigger goals in mind. It was awesome. I mean, I'm really happy for the city. And I know uh, the Bill Street will be a fun place tonight. And uh, you know, most of these guys don't, don't understand the history and, and the heartache that the city has gone through uh, for our playoff history. And so I'm, I'm happy for the city. Uh, we'll enjoy this one for tonight, and tomorrow we'll, we'll get back to work. Well, it's, uh, it's a good win. You know, it's a very good win, uh, especially for our organization. You know, we haven't, we haven't been here in a long time, and for us to get a win here in a tough environment says a lot. This one's tough just because, you know, it's the playoffs. That's really it. They, we had an opportunity. Uh, no one, you know, came into this thinking sweep. We came into this knowing that it's going to be uh, a, a tough series, which it, which it has been already. Uh, and, and we just look to continue getting better. I mean, getting the first playoff win doesn't mean anything, you know. Uh, those guys are champions, and you can't test the heart of a champion. And, and no, no sport. Uh, we we know San Antonio is going to is going to come back uh, like a, like a, a hornet's nest come Wednesday, and uh, so we have to to rest up tonight and and learn from this game. So the, uh, the Grizzlies, and you see the big guys uh, and the breakdown for Zebo and Mark Gasol, 49-28 over Duncan McDice and Dewan Blair, shooting 76% from the floor as they take game one. And uh, credit to the Grizzlies, too, because this thing looked like it was slipping away from them. You know, you had the, the threes by Bonner. You had missed free throws on the Memphis side, and it looked like, okay, now San Antonio is going to take control. But, man, they didn't blink, and Shane Battier hit the big shot. Well, I, you, when you're watching that game, you thought Memphis was going to get a game away missing free throws. And, but, listen, they just kept getting layups. They were aggressive. Matt Bonner played well shooting those trees. But it's such a tough matchup for him because his specialty is three-point shooting. And it's such a tough matchup for him trying to guard Zach Randolph. And you see Tim Duncan, the greatest power forward ever. They don't have to double him. Gasol handled him, outscored him. Uh, so that puts them in an awkward situation because that's just a tough matchup because Zach Randolph can score on anybody. I mean, and then they come in with Arthur. You know, he's the big guy. They got the one ingredient you have to have. They got a crazy guy. <laughs> Tony Allen. Every, every team got to have a great player. You know, they got Zach Randolph. Conley played well. But like I said, they got the crazy guy. They always, they're, they're a lot better. You know, people don't watch them a lot because Memphis is not on national television a lot. But, man, they are really, they got a good team, a good team. They've yeah. split the season series the last two years with San Antonio, so they've played them tough and they take game one. Well, they, I heard um, players saying that they had to take something from this game. What you would take from this game is that San Antonio didn't lose the game. They actually, you had to beat them. Because they, San Antonio got the shots they wanted. They were able to execute down a stretch. Bonner got the threes, open looks. And Richard Jefferson got the game went tying shot wide open. So San Antonio didn't beat themselves. They just didn't make the shots. So you have to know as your Memphis that we have to continue to be executing better each night if we want to stay in the game. We can't make mental mistakes, and that's the thing. And I, one thing I also, also I, I like about our team, we do have a crazy guy, too. So that's <laughs> we what certainly do. You know, Ernie, really you know when, when, when I looked at this series, uh, I was like, I don't see... And by the way, you did pick the Grizzlies to upset the San Antonio Spurs. I do. I think they're going to win this series. Just, I, you know, people say, what's the difference between college and the pros? I said, well, college is different because you play one game and the team don't play well you can lose. 
But when you look at the NBA in a seven-game series, you're like, wow, man, Memphis has got a lot of bad matchups for the Spurs. Even when they get Ginobili back, that ain't going to make them taller. You know, Zach Randolph is the, no, no disrespect to anybody, he's the best big man in this series. Like I say, Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward ever, but we don't live in the past, we live in the present. And Mark Gasol, he, he going to get layups. He giving Tim Duncan fits because he's so big. You know, and, 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 and the matchups, Conley can play, mm. Tony Alley can play. I think Ginobili, though, Chuck, puts everyone in their natural position. Yeah, but he, so, those guys are shooting you jumpers. Know, right, but the, you the, don't the, have, Ginobili gets to the rim. I understand that. He but gets to the rim. He won't be getting against the, against the Grizz. That's the reason the Grizz is split with them, because them two big boys clog up the lane. They come in with Arthur on the bench. They even play the guy, Hadidi, yep. who's a big guy. And the Spurs, uh, the Blair, McDice, those guys going to be getting layups and going to force, they're going to force the Spurs to have to double. That's going to open them up for Mayo and, 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 and Conley to shoot some threes as the series progresses. First time since the uh, playoffs has expanded to the 16-team format that the number one and number two seeds in a conference lost game one at home. It happened today. Meantime, for Shane Battier, huge day. Hits the game-winning shot, and on Twitter, I just laid my eyes on the most beautiful girls in my life, my wife and newest addition. What a day, one for the ages. So Shane Batty, his wife gives birth on the same day he hits the game winner in the first playoff victory ever for the Grizzlies. And he was the first draft pick of the Memphis Grizzlies. Wow. That's you know, wonderful. the year you they moved from Vancouver. You know what's interesting about that, Ernie? You know, people talk about the Gerald Watts was a great trade by Portland. The Grizzlies getting Shane Battier was huge. Brings a lot. Uh, it brings a lot of stuff you don't see on the stat sheet as well. Uh, meantime, tomorrow night on uh -oh. TNT, Philly, Miami, Indiana, Chicago. When we come back, we're going to preview that pair of game twos. As far as in six. I'm sticking with my Grizz. We had our chances, and we, you know, we didn't, you know, it's, I mean, the guys fought. They did everything we asked them to do. Um, for you, if Durant and Westbrook can make 72 points against us, as, well, as hard as we're playing, um, I, I don't think, that, I think we'll be able to make some adjustments here, can hopefully continue to control their other players and um, make it a hell of a series. Tremendous game one, won by Oklahoma City over George Carl's Denver Nuggets. Check out charlesbarkley.com. I, mean, I got a great rant You can't on there get tonight. enough of Chuck. Is it? Are you did it? Really? Yeah. Finally you, wasn't well, because I got to tell you, one of the saddest things in my life, they, they're killing all my children. Uh, Erica Kane's going to die, y'all. And Tad Martin, my two favorite soap oh, actors. All my all, children all are my soap children. Are yes. You, I you know I love soap. All my children, like, really people in that. No, no, no. All no. my children. Do you never watch soap operas? I do, but I, you said they're killing all my children. I thought you were going to make a political stance and not talk about a <laughs> no, soap no, opera. No, no, this is not. No, but I got to, you got, I'm, I'm going to miss Erica Kane and, and oh, Michael no. Knight, Tad Martin. I, I'm, I'm, really I'm going to miss them. I'm and one life to live. Chuck, my heart goes out. Dor yeah. Dorian and Vicky. They're, kill they're killing all what my children. What about Dorian and Didn't you Vicky? think that was a political I, stance? I, I know. I hey, know. what I about was... Asa Buchanan? Yeah. I had a thing for Liza Colby, too. Oh, my God. By the way, tomorrow night, all the playoff action comes remember in Liza the Eastern Colby? Conference. Sixers and Heat get us started. Then it's the Pacers and Bulls. Our preview starts in Chicago, where Derrick Rose went for 39 in the opener, and where a post-game comment by the Pacers' Danny Granger got the attention of our Jamie Maggio. Danny, obviously, you know, the game isn't over until it's over. Did you guys feel like at any point in this game that you had it won? I mean, with, with Chicago, no. <laughs> with Derrick Rose on the other team, no. You know, it's like a, like a crazy stalker ex-girlfriend, you know? <laughs> Every, Every time you tell her you don't want to talk to her, she show up at your door again, you know, so. So, Derek, nowhere in this media guide, in your bio, does it say anything about crazy ex-girlfriend? Oh. That's a, that's a new one. Is that a fair description? You take it as kind of a compliment? Um, you got to take it as a compliment. Um, I was just happy that we fought our way back into the game and won it. There was a tough team to beat. They came out ready to play. It was a tough game yesterday. Well, I mean, did, did you laugh when you heard that he called you the crazy ex-girlfriend? And do you kind of know what, what he means by that? Yeah, I, I definitely know what he means by <laughs> that. But, um, no, but um, 
Uh, they're a good team. He's a great player. He started off um, cold and got hot very quickly. And he's tough to cool down when he gets going. Obviously, you guys come in here as a top seed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, at some point, you, had, you guys were down by nine at yeah. some point in the fourth quarter. Were you thinking, we're a top seed. This can't be happening right now. Like, we got to get back in this and, and pull out with the win. Um, if anything, um, we, we always have confidence that we could win every game that we go into. And um, I think everybody just thought that um, we couldn't lose. Uh, we worked too hard this whole year, and uh, we've been playing too well together, and we're at home. And we, we, we needed that game yesterday. Good luck in game two. Thank you. I and uh, we'll send it out to Craig Sager in Miami. The Miami Heat practiced today without Dwayne Wade, who is suffering from a recurring migraine. He spent the day at home resting and sleeping while taking oral medication to relieve the dizziness and pain. He will be reevaluated tomorrow. The teammate Chris Bosch says the team must be ready and prepared to play without him. I think it'll change the offensive game plan um, and the defensive game plan a little bit because he's such a playmaker. But, you know, it's just minor adjustments. All in all, we're going to play the same style that we always play. The rotations will be a little different. But, um, you know, you always have to be prepared for the worst, especially now. So I think the best thing our guys can do is just kind of mentally start getting prepared just in case he's not available. We expect him to be here tomorrow, you know, this is, you know, give him a full day today, give him a full day tomorrow, and, um, you know, he'll be here by tomorrow night for sure if he can't come here for shoot him. Wade missed the game January 22nd with a migraine headache. After receiving medication and wearing goggles, he returned five days later in a loss to New York. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Segs. Uh, StatsCube on NBA.com. And you can see the percentage of the team's output attributed to D. Wade. 22% of the points. What are you doing, Chuck? I'm looking for something. What are you looking for? Carlos Boozer. <laughs> he didn't need to be there yet. Come on, Carlos Boozer. You got to play better than that. He didn't need to be there yet. Oh, you got to. Oh, he, wanted, he need to be there for game two. Yeah. Well, he's good for rested from game one. Anyway, that's our doubleheader tomorrow night. Indiana at Chicago, Philadelphia at Miami. Oh, my goodness. In, in, in addition to our games on TNT, though. you'll catch three games on NBA TV this week. Tuesday, Hawks and Magic. Wednesday, Grizz and Spurs. Thursday, Bulls and Pacers. Ernie, you ever have a crazy ex-girlfriend stalker? <laughs> <laughs> I think he did, Ernie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew somebody did that one yeah. time. I will not be ignored! <laughs> <laughs>
at those waiters you hey, got on Hey, is that David Spade? It is David Spade. I'm going to tell you something. That show he's on, Rules of, en Rules of Engagement, is a great show. Okay, who else? Y'all need to watch that. It's on CBS. It's okay. part of our parent company. And this was the uh, the New Jersey fishing trip. Oh, Jersey Shore was in the building. Oh, uh, I don't know the names of the oh, Jersey Shore. Oh, uh, my man Prokhorov. I know there's somebody like a Snooky, a Snooky. D. Wills in there. Let's see. I don't know. Oh, Jersey Shore. You know what yeah. we call that? Black What's people that? like that. What's that called? Hood raps. Bon <laughs> <laughs> Fisher is getting too high, bro. I'm just letting you know that. That's what we call it in the hood. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Utah also. Oh, oh Fisher. Dirty. That was just. Come oh. on. That was. Oh, come on, man. The most. Not. That was we had to go not back and right. get. We had to go back in the look morning. At the, <laughs> look at the jimmer in there. <laughs> the oh. Oh, oh my. Look at me, I got my heads up. Yes, throw them off the boat! Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what? That's pretty funny. Oh. Yeah, it's not nice, but it's yeah, pretty it's dark. Funny. You know what's funny? That's why you asked the weather had around here. Huh? You went ahead around here all the time. No, I, I he had his pajamas on. This is just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he had his, he had his I can see him. He that. wouldn't be like Thurston Howell the third. No. Oh. You know why I don't wear this around here? Because when you take it off, you got that band around your forehead just like that. Trust me, ain't no band big enough for your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> ain't that much hat in the world. Hey, are we already done? Uh, yeah. We're already done. Day yeah. one, baby. 40, 39 more to go, y'all.